Well, uh, Martin, we started in 1953. The group was called Clyde McFatter and the Drifters. But uh, he was a conscripted into the United States Army. And I came along in late 1954 and uh, became the lead singer. So what was the first hit record for you? Uh, it was a song called Adorable Baby that we recorded in Los Angeles, California in 1955. I think around uh, October 1955 and it went to straight to the rhythm and blues charts to number five. We had some of the guys in the group that wrote songs, but mainly we used uh, guys like Doc Pormis and Mort Schumann, Jerry Lieber, Mike Stoller, Carol King, Gerald Goffin. And what was it like at that time? Because the music business was changing dramatically. Very exciting, it was like an evolution. You know, we had um, crossed over from what you call the ry rhythm and blues era to the rock and roll era. That came about with Alan Freed, who uh, was a New York disc jockey, as you know, and uh, he, recoined the uh, rhythm and blues to rock and roll, you know, because of the white, vast white audience we had. We had to change the name also, you know, so to get played on white stations. When was the first time you came over here yourselves? Uh, our first time here, Martin, was 1965, but we only stayed about three weeks, and we didn't return again until 1971. The sort of material that you made at that time was all about going out, having a good time, kissing in the back row of the movies later on. Was that a philosophy in your music, or did it just happen that way? Well, we decided to keep our songs um, situation songs. We decided that we wouldn't do any protest songs or any sort of political type uh, music. You know, we, we wanted to do happy stuff because everybody seemed to jump on that 1960 bandwagon of doing protest stuff. The Drifters decided to stay away from it. And I think that enhanced us to our public to know that we were just trying to please them and not preach to them, you know? Was that the reason why your music was so popular as well? Because it was all about having a good time and at the end of the day, everybody wants to have a good time. I would say so, Martin, because let's face it, like you, like you just said, everybody want to have a good time, right? We do a bit of choreography because you say it's good, it looks good, you know, to the punters, right? So we, we do that because it looks good, but basically we stick to just doing our hits with a little movement interjected into our show to make it a better act. Another one that's uh, a favorite of mine is Up on the Roof. Well, I wasn't in the group at the time. It was uh, recorded by Rudy Lewis, who passed away in 1964. Um, I guess it was, it was a song that I heard had been released once before. And I think about eight months later, they re-released it again and it became a hit. But the first time wasn't a hit. And then, of course, in the 1970s, your success continued with some new songwriters. And you really hit the big time here in the UK. We met Roger Greenaway and Roger Cook. They started writing uh, our songs, which are more or less sequels to what we'd done in the 60s. And uh, it was just a continuation of what we had done 15 years earlier that were reproduced over here, but only on a different name, different lyrics, and different songs, you know? There aren't many people that can say, you know, they formed in the 50s, they had some massive hits in the 60s and 70s, and they're still performing in the 1990s. Is it still as much fun for you now? It's even more fun now because, um, you know, we look in the audience now, we see young kids, like, I mean, eight, 10 years old, you know? And we see the grannies too who like grew up with us and we see the mothers and fathers. And like I said, our, our group is a family group. We do a family show. There's no robbery and no risque stuff and we never use any bad language on stage. We just go on and uh, entertain our people. If you, if you know our, our history, we got about, I would say about four dozen hits. I mean, there was top 10 hits. People ask us, uh, when are you gonna record again, Johnny? We always say, well, yeah, well, sooner or later, you know, but basically we're not really into worrying about getting a hit record because we really don't need it, as you know. I always said I want to do a soundtrack for a major film. I would love to do that. Um, I think we'd love to record again too because we haven't had one out since Little Red Book in 1976. And quite a lot of your music has actually been covered by other people. Bruce Willis, who did a couple of your records under the boardwalk, and uh, how do you feel about that in the 1990s, other people doing your music? When Bruce Willis did it, he had the temptations backing him up. So what I did was when we started performing this song, well, before we performed this song, I would say something like, uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, you know, we did it first in 1964. I said, well, Bruce Willis has it out now, I said, but he's only moonlighting. <laughs> <laughs> Get a laugh and go right into the song, you know. But it was, in fact, it revived it for us.